John Dumontel. I've saved this question for late because it's a really, really important one. Uh, another tool that is rarely talked about, they say, are the people you work with on larger projects. How do you know when a project is too big for one person? How do you know when a project is too big for you? Uh, when do you when you think you're out of your depth and choose to ask, when do you think you're at, or when you think you're out of your depth on a job and choose to ask for help instead of struggling through it? Well, everybody learned, I feel like everybody learns this lesson the hard way. I learned it the hard way. Um, I was always clever at making things. I was always clever at making things. And I, my parents supported me early. Uh, I built fantastical strange things in my childhood and in my teens. And in my late teens, I moved into New York City. I went to NYU briefly for about six and a half months. Uh, and then because all my friends at NYU were at the NYU Film School, uh, I spent the next few years, the 80s, the later 80s, working on all my friends' student films at, in, in New York. Uh, and I, I art directed my buddy Davey's film, Gargoyle and Goblin, uh, and built, we built huge sets for that thing. It was really elaborate. It was a beautiful team. I uh, had so much fun. Uh, at least two of the people on my crew went on to be like world-class production designers. It was incredibly fun. And I thought when I finished that, that you remember how I said earlier on in this live stream that you think as a young person that you're gonna fill your brain with information and then you can use that information to just tackle shit and that that's not the truth. I finished art directing my buddy Davies film thinking that I now had that, like that vessel full of information and I knew how to apply it. And my friend Gabby called me up and asked me to art direct a, a student film that she was producing. And it involved a guy having an interaction with a bank machine. And it was a room, a single room, about 10 by 12, with two doors for going in, like a bank, like a, a bank vestibule for using an ATM. It needed a wall with a, sunk in ATM. They had somebody else building the computer screen and doing the graphics, but I would be doing all of the dressing for an ATM vestibule. And the total budget they had to spend was like $850. This is, that is student films. That is a standard kind of, um, you know, difficult budget you have in a student film. And I, again, I thought that I had the skills necessary because I thought, well, now I filled the vessel. Now I can apply it to solve this problem. And I went on to screw up this job so badly, so horrifyingly, that the guy who had spent two or three summers earning the money for the student film felt like I had boned his whole production, because I had. Uh, I didn't sleep for the final four days. When they got on set to, to get ready to shoot, my set wasn't done. They all had to roll up their sleeves to help me finish the set. They pulled three all-nighters in a row to work around my deteriorating set, and I wasn't even there because they sent me home because I clearly didn't know what the hell I was doing. At the loadout, I wasn't there because I felt so guilty. I didn't go to the loadout, which is like a cardinal sin. You never miss the loadout. You never miss the loadout. The only loadout I ever missed again in my life was when I had food poisoning. And I know that my supervisor on that job thought I was lying. He still thinks today, I'm sure, that I was lying, but I really did have food poisoning, Larry. Anyway, I screwed up Gabby's film so badly that she specifically said to me at the end, you couldn't have done anything more to tell me that I shouldn't be your friend. Like I lost, a friend told me I lost them as a friend by boning this job, by not asking for help. Sorry, I didn't realize it was because I didn't ask for help. I didn't realize that until later. Uh, later, I went to the set to pick up my tools and they weren't there. And there was a note there from Gabby that said, I have your tools, come and see me. And when I went to see her, she was like, okay, Show me all the receipts because we didn't see the money. 850 bucks you spent on that set, I want every penny accounted for. And we sat there for three hours and went through every penny. And then she's, <laughs> yeah, I have never felt lower in my life at that than that moment. Um, I called my dad and I was like openly weeping on the phone. I felt like such shit. 
And my dad was like, yeah, you really screwed up. There's nothing you can do about it. You, you can't apologize. You can't take back the time that you stole from all those people by not doing your job correctly. You can't make your friend love you again necessarily. All you can do is try and figure out why it happened and try and make sure that doesn't happen again. That's all you can do in this moment. And I, it, it, was a really, it was a really powerful thing to hear uh, because it's true. You can't make it better. And when you can't make it better, the only task you have is to try and make sure that it, it doesn't happen again. And I realized upon thinking about it that I didn't ask for help. And I didn't see early enough that I needed help. And I didn't know how to ask for it. Um, and interestingly enough, a, 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 few, a few months later, uh, a young filmmaker who had made some success in the film industry in another job reached out to me because of a family friend and said, would you art direct this ambitious little 10 minute film I wanna make about a kid having a, like a, a, a mental break that makes this room leave the building he's in. So it was this whole thing of, of, a, of the rage of this teenager causing their room to like, like eject from the building, like brickwork falling and this. So it was gonna be miniature work, it's gonna be large set work. And we walked through the whole thing and we got along really well, the director and I, as we sat for an afternoon walking through the, the process. And I got home and I started diagramming out what I needed and I realized this is a gigantic job. There is no way I can take full responsibility for this job. I do not have the skill set to bring all these processes together of a large scale and a miniature and making them work and making them match to the quality I know that this guy wants. And I called him back and I said, I could do this job for you, but I'm going to need some help. I'm going to need somebody else that is also working on it. So we'll need to find somebody. And they never called me back. I lost that job. Um, and, you know, my life might have been very different. Who knows? Uh, you know, the butterfly effect and all that. Uh, but I don't regret one second losing that job. Because that was the beginning of, I feel like, my nascent maturity as a maker. I knew that I was likely to end up in the same zone on that job that I was on my friend Gabby's. Uh, and Gabby and I made up years later. It's all good. Um, and I really appreciated that. And I also appreciated her honesty with me in the moment. She was really mad and she let me know. And like, that is also a, a real thing that that friend of mine did for me. They, they told me their honest emotions. Um, so, that is the longest way of saying you got to learn the hard way. You got, you got to know that if you think, if you think you've got it wired, life is winding up to smack you back into sense. If you think, oh man, I got this. This is going to be easy and fun. Life has other plans for you. <laughs> um, that is completely axiomatic. Uh, that is a, a truism that never changes. Every moment I have ever thought, I got this. Uncertainty is your friend. Uncertainty and confusion mean that you're doing it right. <laughs> I know it doesn't feel like that, but it really, really is true. Um, ask for help. Ask for help early and often. Don't try and be the person that can solve all the problems. Nobody needs you to solve all the problems. Only you think that you should solve all the problems. And I mean this in everything, seriously. If you're the one in your family that like gets everyone to calm down and you think that that's your job, that is so not your job. If you think that you're the one at your workplace who can keep everything running and keep all those balls in the air, that shouldn't be you. That is, you need some help. Ask for help. We all work better. I, look, I, I love working alone. I love working alone here in the cave. It's one of my great pleasures. And I get to exercise that pleasure all the freaking time. And I have had some of the most transcendent moments in my life working with other people. Working with Heinemann. Working with Fawn Davis. Working, working with my whole, you know, 
when you are working with somebody else and you are collaborating on a thing and you are all doing your job at the height of your abilities, which was Mythbusters for 13 years, all of us, that whole crew, that whole cast, uh, same thing here at Tested, same thing here at Tested. We are all doing our jobs at the, to the best of our abilities, us in our butts, taking responsibility for what's ours, but asking for help when we need it. And it means that we're all really happy with how it goes and what we're doing. Um, so ask for help early and often. That feels like a great place to, to, to stop. Um, seriously, uh, John Dumontel, it is such an important question when to ask for help. The answer is more than you think. Um, everybody, Tested Premium members and everybody watching, thanks for joining me for this. I just love chatting about this stuff. Stay safe, take good care of each other, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a Tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. Questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.